Eh, Montoya. It's written in French. Okay. Dieu et Montoya. Dieu et Montoya. Dieu et Montoya. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, God and my right. Yes. And so, already, even as we speak English, <laughs> there is so yeah, yeah, much yeah. of France yeah. in the English that we do speak. Okay. We tell each other bon appétit when we're eating. Yes. You know, um, and, and many other things. You know, yeah. we say au revoir when, 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 when we want to see each other again. Yes. But it's more than just that, yeah. you know. Um, in the end, Africa is a wonderful continent which has had interesting histories. Yeah. You know, the histories may have been joyful. Yeah. They could be more joyful in other areas. Yeah. But what's interesting is whether we look at history from one side of Africa or another side of Africa, there's a lot we can learn from history. It is a creative industry talk. My name is Eddie Okila. And of course, my guest this morning has been around the world. A man who has worked in the investment banking sector. is an engineer by profession. He is a ballroom dancer, the British 2015 champion of the ballroom dance. And of course, he is a creative thinker. He is a man who is trying to turn life of the farmers in northern uganda around and trying to give them meaning creatively using energy electricity created from food waste to useful stuff ladies and gentlemen all across the world the one and only engineer peter odokonero in fact his, his name is peter benhor odokonero nyeko peter welcome to the show i had to get this right today awesome thank you yes, very yes, much yes. You're welcome to the program, and of course, um, I like the new look of you. Today, we're not seeing you on, the, you know, the suit and uh, Mr. Uganda, the tie. I think some people are going to be very, very confused <laughs> 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 of how creative you have become to come onto the creative industry <laughs> talk. <laughs> how are you today? Awesome, awesome. Uh, bonjour à tous. Sabah uh, al uh buenos dias bon dia bom dia to everyone wow wow that's that... shanghao <laughs> <laughs> all right so yes. peter has just returned from um, france and is uh, fresh from montefila with uh, french president emmanuel macro and of course many people there from africa from the new africa french uh, you know relationships and the cons the conference that happened in france just a week ago and today on the program we're focusing on that discussion if you will put the topic up there for everyone to see all across the world this house of talent television we're talking about the new africa france summit 2021 what does it really mean for uganda creative industry and that will be the very first start of this interview pete awesome thank you very much it's great to be here again yeah awesome, awesome. you're welcome yes and um, it we were great and grateful you know with my colleagues to have spent a few days um, in, in France um, in Paris and Montpellier Montpellier is on the south of France it's 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 basically on the Mediterranean Sea lovely weather it felt like being in in Kampala actually well. <laughs> um, with uh, yeah. at, at least 21 others who went with us from Uganda yeah. from different industries including the creative industry space wow yes wow so we want to just dive into that conversation peter yes. today just to sort of like understand i mean what does this new africa you know france relationship means to the african creative industry and to start from the africa perspective then we'll narrow it down to east africa and we'll bring it down to uganda what does this really mean to us what is france saying to us ultimately creative
creativity comes down to the building blocks of life. Yeah. Comes down to understanding. Yeah. Comes down to communication, to conversation, and to understanding each other. Understanding each other's customs, each other's cultures, each other's best points, each other's needs uh, for encouragement or otherwise, and each other's inspirations. So one way of looking at it is saying, great, I mean, how do we communicate? Yeah. You know, um, what language do we use? Do we uh, speak to each other in French, in France? Do we speak to each other in an African language in Africa? Um, do our French colleagues learn our languages? Do we learn their languages? Do uh, we learn how to eat their food? Do they learn how to eat our food? Do we learn how to make it? Do we find interesting ways to find similarities between us? What do our grandmothers teach us? Could it be the same thing? What do our grandfathers teach us? Could it be the same thing as well? Yeah. And finding within that, within our cultures and traditions, a lot of similarities that we can build on. And that's one way of looking at it, kick, okay. k kicking off. But then also, when we think of it from the other side, yeah. We also have similar challenges, yeah. you know. Um, we're all on Mother Earth, so the environment is important to all of us. Yeah. The future is important to all of us. The climate is important to all of us. And, you know, little children who are being born and growing, we all want to make sure they live in yeah. a better world yeah. um, than we're in now. And so these are some of the few similarities we have in common. And I'm sure there's so many more. So what creativity is so important and the industry of creativity is so important is because it allows us to explore our similarities yeah. in many ways and accentuate them and build our relationships around those. Wow. This is the Creative Industry Talk. My name is Edio Kela. Mr. Peter Nyeko is in the studio. He's fresh from France. And we're talking about the new Africa-France Summit 2021 and what it means for the creative industry in Africa. And Peter has just given us a whole different, you know, you know, perspective to this. New Africa, what does this really mean to Ugandan creatives, if you will break it down. We want to just, you know, first before the Ugandan, but yeah. today, East Africa. Indeed. East Africa has a few spots that has a relationship with France. We are not necessarily a very deep French-speaking countries, but we are part of the African continent, which France is saying this is our, we need to have a new African relationship with us. What does this really mean to the Anglo-speaking countries in East Africa when France brings and starts this kind of conversation? Awesome. What's, what's interesting is, you know, even if you go to England, yeah. if you go to the United Kingdom and you look at the coat of arms of the royal family, yeah. um, there is there written, Dieu est mon droit. Yeah. It's written in French. Okay. Dieu est um, mon droit. Dieu et mon droit. Dieu et mon droit. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, God and my right. Yes. And so, already, even as we speak English, <laughs> there is so yeah, yeah, much yeah. of France yeah. in the English that we do speak. Okay. We tell each other bon appetit when we're eating, yes. you know, um, and, and many other things. You know, yeah. we say au revoir when, 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 when we want to see each other again. Yes. But it's more than just that, yeah. you know. Um, in the end, Africa is a wonderful continent which has had interesting histories. Yeah. You know, the histories may have been joyful. Yeah. They could be more joyful in other areas. Yeah. But what's interesting is whether we look at history from one side of Africa or another side of Africa, there's a lot we can learn from history. Yeah. And there's a lot we can work with what we know from history yeah. to make the future even brighter. Yeah. And that's what I see from this. There is so much that we here in Uganda, for yeah. example, have learned yeah. from our brothers and sisters yeah. in uh, the more French speaking parts of Africa, yeah. Yeah. especially when it comes down to culture, yeah. fashion, music, and so on. I mean, over the years, as Uganda's own music industry was being built, I'm yeah. pretty sure yeah. Yeah. there was a lot of music coming in from the Congo and other places, yes, you yes, know, Pepe yes. Kale, all yes, these yes, guys, yes, yes. before we had our own people yeah. on this side coming up with, with the music. So, with music already, we, we've seen that conversation. 
with fashion, we still see that conversation yeah. all across. My shirt's made in Kampala, but the tailor was born in Congo. Yes. So, I mean, that conversation is already happening yeah. as, as we speak. We just want to take that conversation deeper okay. and, and let it flow both, both ways. Yeah. There also, there's also a lot from the East African way of doing things yeah. that can be shared on the other side as well. Yeah. The entrepreneurial way of life and, and a few other things as well. Yeah. So that, that conversation is something which, you know, um, starts off in Africa, yeah. hence, you know, new in Africa, wow. but it also flows in to France and other places yeah. because um, France has a lot of Africa in it as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, not just in the last hundred years, but if you go historically way, way back, yeah. think of um, think of the Africans, you know, who were part yeah. of uh, the Roman ecosystem yeah. as France became part of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Think about the relationship going back, way back to those days, thousands of years ago. So it's not just a hundred years. Yes. This relationship has been there before. It has been there. It's been there yes. before, yes. Now, now, Peter, we just want to encourage everyone to, you know, go on to our YouTube, subscribe, like, share, fan, wide. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Twitter for those who are on the move. Twitter is live for you right there and, of course, on our website. So any of those platforms that you're watching the program from, please go and share it far and wide. We're going to have a great conversation with Peter and we're just trying to sort of like lay a ground to, you know, what does this, you know, new Africa you know france 2021 summit means to us going forward peter you've broken this from the africa perspective we want you to just and you've talked about it from the east african perspective let's bring it home all right home is uganda and uganda has been the home and the host to alliance francais and the french embassy for many years and um, the relationship has been working on back in the days we used to have a lot of uh, the, the the french uh, you know alliance francais and ugcs which is the, um, the, the, the Gauthier Foundation. And, and all of this about promoting creativity, culture, and beginning to Indeed. foster relationship for you know, cross-cultural learning, for peace building. What does this mean when the French people and the president begin to say New Africa? What does it mean for Uganda yeah. and the creative industry? Awesome. So new is, is an interesting word, you yeah. know? New is rebirth yeah you could think about it that way yeah. rejuvenation yeah. you know um and you could be starting with where you are yeah. and discovering more within that yeah. and expanding upon it yeah and so we're saying it's amazing you know many of us who are above a certain age will remember a day when there were lots of cars on uganda's roads yeah. that were made in france do you remember what those cars were called yes renault and Renault and the Peugeot. And that one in yes. French, what do they call it? Uh, Peugeot. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the 504, yes. 502, the 204. Indeed, indeed. So, yes, so yes, there, yes. There, there's enough yes, of that yes. in there already. Yeah. But when we come to today, yeah. go to all the restaurants around Kampala, yeah. coffee shops, you'll find croissants yeah. all around Kampala. So, I mean, it's already changing as we see. Yeah. And we love that. But we're saying, what more is there? If we think about it from a different angle, we talked about creative industry. Yes. And creative industry, creativity and industry yes. goes beyond fashion, goes beyond music, goes yeah. beyond dance, yeah. goes to the building blocks of industry itself. Yeah. Yeah. Because industry itself is creativity yeah. made real. Yeah. And if we think about the creative industries yeah. of France or the industries which are of a French origin yeah. that have brought their creativity to Uganda. I mean, we know very well that very many Ugandan young people went to study about, you know, um, engineering of a certain type, mm. you know, and uh, there's a huge investment from a number of large French companies in Uganda, yeah. linked a lot yeah. to, you know, other industries, yes. whether you're thinking it from, from the point of view of energy, yeah. or you're thinking it from the point of view of water, yeah or from the point of view of logistics, yes. or from the point of view of infrastructure and yes. roads. Yes. When you think about it from that angle as well now, yeah. you go, how big is France's investment conversation In Uganda. with Uganda? Okay, that's a very interesting conversation to have.
And when we think about it from that point of view, yeah. is it a fleeting investment or is it an investment for the ages? If it is an investment for the ages, if that investment, yeah. our conversations should also be built on building blocks that can go on for generations. Yeah. Therefore, the communication has to be renewed yes. in many ways. Yes. We have to find new and more interesting ways yeah. to understand each other even more. Yeah. Who knows, maybe I speak to someone in, French, in France in French yeah. and they speak back to me in Luo. Yeah. Maybe we'll try something like that. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> maybe I'll go to France yeah. and yeah. have Luombo yeah. in Paris and yeah. they'll come to Kampala and have croissants in Kampala. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, we already have, you know, Ugandan fashion designers based yes, in France, yes, don't, yes. Don't, don't we? There's a yes, lovely we know, lady. We there. have uh, Stella Tal based in France. We have another lady based in France. Yes. And Stella actually has been teaching in a French school. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Indeed. For these years. And um, she's been teaching people our culture in a low, in, in a, in a, in a, in a you know, preschool. Yes. And of course, teaching also people in the community. Indeed, indeed. Yes. And we've hosted our own creative industry quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And then down the road here, yeah. we've got the Alliance Française, you yes. know, around the corner, we've yes. got the Ecole Française, but yes. many Ugandan schools are teaching French, yes. you know, yes. um, and Ugandan universities as well are teaching French. Yes. And a lot of our professional public sector servants yeah. in different sectors yeah. of government yeah. are quite fluent in French. Yeah. You know, I've, 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 I've had conversations with people in agriculture <laughs> who speak yes. French as well as, you know, um, you could possibly imagine yeah. and, and so on and so forth. So the, the building blocks are there. Yeah. But now we need to say, great, Uganda is a very young country. Yeah. We've got great building blocks. Yeah. How can we build on from these building blocks and involve these young people who are the future of this country in this conversation? Wow. And that's where it becomes really interesting. Wow. And that's what takes us to the speech which was made by His Excellency the President of France in Ouagadougou mm -hmm. in 2017, yeah. which went on to what happened a couple of weeks ago in France with people coming together, conversations being frank, honest, respectful, hopeful, and positive. And that's really exciting from that angle. Yeah. If you go and follow on Twitter or on the internet, and just, just Google, you know, in, in English, because all those websites now are in English as, as well, you know, even though they're, they're obviously in French as well, but you go Google New Africa France Summit, okay? When you Google that, you'll find so many interesting websites linked to that. And um, it takes you to a lot of the interesting initiatives that have that were birthed out of the redefining of the conversation that started in Wagadugu a few years ago and that have been augmented by the deeper conversations had the other week where we had a number of Ugandans actually on stage, yeah. you know, both ladies and, and gentlemen, uh, but others from, from, from across the continent. And now for those in the, in the traditional creative industries, as well as any other industries which are creative, because they all are, there are so many things that you can find there which can help you be part of improving this conversation while moving forward with your hopes and dreams as colleagues building the hopeful future for this continent. Wow. They always say that uh, the greatest uh, asset you have in every organization is uh, human beings. So leadership starts with you and how you interact with the people around you, you know, even in your home. Yeah. The truth is, if you're not able to lead your home very well, you can't lead anything else. Wow. So leadership starts with you. And if you set that example, others will follow you.
I want to know what is it what is it like to be the president and the CEO of Baywood Continental Baywood Group and all these things going on how do you manage you got to stay focused and got to you have to have your eye on the ball yeah eye on the ball yeah. always so what's that ball to succeed make a success not minding the challenges ladies and gentlemen emperor chris Bewood, Ibe. Why the youth? They're the future. I don't care, but they're the future. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. But you know what? That step does not guarantee you are going to reach that to that destination. Yeah. Continuous working will assure you get to that stage. So, one of the things that I pride myself for is that you don't need to have billions to be a philanthropist. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I did it and I found the secret. The success is given. Welcome back. This is the Creative Industry Talk. My name is Eddie O'Kela and in the studio is engineer Peter Benhur Odoko Nyero Nyeko. He is also the proprietor of, uh, rather the CEO of um, Mandulis Energy and of course uh, Ripal and Chakula. These are all brands under him and the creative space is what Peter does. Peter is a dancer and is, a, is an Arabic teacher. He, is, uh, he speaks French and he speaks Luo, he speaks English fluently, and he speaks Spanish. Now, these are all facets of creativity in one man. Who is better fit to be on this show? And uh, he was one of the people who were in France speaking in French with the French president <laughs> representing Uganda. And of course, uh, on that summit that we had in France a few just w days back or weeks back. Peter, welcome back to the program. We want to go back from the point where we are talking about. We're discussing um, the new Africa-France summit 2021. Yes. Now, the opening of the conference. Let's start from there. What Indeed. does it really mean for creativity in Uganda? We, we saw the French president and the French people open that summit with um, a dance from the African lady and uh, one seemingly looking like Italian and then the African dance was on stage and everything was about that and, and, and in that moment what was it trying to communicate to Africa and to you know the creative industry? Thank you so much. I mean being African and being in that room you know, you could say it was interesting, you know, um, it was vibrant mm -hmm. and um, it was welcoming. And anyone mm -hmm. who had come in mm -hmm. and may have felt a bit cold mm -hmm. warmed up. The ice was broken. It was possible to now be open, fully open and feel when you open an event with the kind of music that makes you move, get off your feet and sweat a little bit. The conversation thereafter is fully open. Yeah. Nothing's held back. So that was very interesting from that point, point of view. But also the fact that those who may have been in France for the first time yeah. suddenly thought, wait, I'm from Chad, I'm in France, there's a Chad and musician on stage or oh, I'm from Bujumbura, I'm in France, yeah. there's a Bujumburan dancer on stage yeah. and thinking, wow, I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel welcomed, I feel at home. Yeah. That's the message which everyone could basically feel. But yeah. at the same time, yeah. the fact that you have people from France mm -hmm. who are not from an African origin, yeah. joining in and having even more fun than we used to have to <laughs> that same music <laughs> meant yes. We're all one family. Uh -huh. And that was wonderful. And it made a difference because it was a very young audience, an audience where I may have been one of the few people who were not as young. That made a difference there as well. But when we got to the point where the head of state welcomed everyone and had a stage 
with very young people on it and very open conversations in French and in English on that stage, which you can all see online. You can go to the, the website you know, of um, uh, New Africa France Summit. You can go to the website of the LSA Palace. Or, I mean, the entire three and a half hour uh, you know, um, big event at the end of the summit is all there online. But you can see everything else as well, as well as the, you know, the other conversations. But it, early in the morning, because this happened in the evening to close it, yeah. but in the morning and in the early afternoon, yeah. you had different sections of the summit where you had the business people having their mini summits and, you know, um, a Ugandan spoke there. You had the creative industries having their conversations and a Ugandan spoke there as well. Yeah. You had the, you know, the environmental side of things and you, you had the sports side of things. So now you see business, environment, sports, creativity. That's what makes it so interesting. Everything that we are really vibrant with as a continent yeah. and as a world going forward. Wow. Yes. Um, Peter, so that moment communicated connectivity according yes. to you. That moment communicated that we are welcome. That moment communicated that the things are starting from a new you know, perspective. I mean, it was a, a moment for reflection for very many people, including myself, uh, when I was looking into that. Um, earlier on, we had uh, had a series of events uh, all across, I think, uh, Uganda, uh, when they were preparing toward this day. And one of the things that struck me most was a film that was uh, screened, you know, in preparation leading to the conference. It was about Don Film. The t film was titled Don Film Me. And when we watched this film, there was this scene in the film where, uh, you know, the director and the producer comes and um, he pulls out the, you know, the sweets and the chocolate and give it to the children. And the children are speaking. And then somebody comes and says, why do you give them the chocolate? Did they ask you if they did you ask them if they want the chocolate? What if they want cassava? What if they want this? What if they want this? And that moment simply just came out alive. And we were having a conversation in that moment and saying, Look, when we hear now the new Africa France relationship and looking at the past where uh, you know the Western world would always just come and give they assume that this is what you need and then just give you from the creative point of view they would come here to come and write the story and tell the story of an african band or woman without talking and getting their perspective the french president and the french people seems to be saying no we now want this story to be told by you and that's what i saw on the stage and that's what i saw the choreography and you know the, you know the dance the, the the culture that was being fused on there was telling a lot of things in the background where does this leave us with our you know the previous mindsets of this is how it is to the new mindset that is trying to be shaped at the moment by the french people what's most interesting is on that journey that we went to and in the conversations that we had. Yeah. The first thing is new Africa. Yeah. We felt the new Africa so much because we got to meet other Africans who we may have not met otherwise. Yeah. Africa is not as connected and interconnected as it could be. Yeah. So to have an opportunity to meet other entrepreneurs, other creatives, other young people from other African countries where you spend a week together yeah. and interact and share and learn and build on for a better future was even bigger than any conversations that were had with France. Yeah. The, it, what was great there was you'll find a difference you'll find a change from the relationships that were built amongst the Africans who had actually gone yeah. that's kind of one way of looking at it secondly obviously as you did say you know at 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 the event you know at the event it was no holds barred there was 
every bit of honesty. There was a lot of truth. There was a lot of understanding and coming to terms with the more difficult parts of the history of this relationship. Yeah. And it was crucial in that it is now called the new Africa-France Summit. And uh, it follows the alphabetical order. Though previously, many years ago, yeah. it was the other way around. It was France-Africa relationship. Indeed. Yes. So the, you could say the focus is more on following the alphabetical order now. Yes. <laughs> I see where you're coming. I see the point. Yes. Um, um, Peter, that said, um, does that now mean that uh, from a creative point of view, down here in Uganda, yes. we can now begin to think about what are our creative, you know, you know, works here, you know, businesses that we also start here. Can it begin to go and open up stalls in France? Can Ugandans, uh, you know, creative people also, Africa creative people also go and invest in France? Because there's been the trade balance between, you know, France and Africa. In, in, in to, to be specific and, and in Uganda is, is, is more of the France investing in Uganda and less of Uganda investing in France. Now, I want to look at from that point yes. of view. Mm. If we're thinking now creatively and there are products, of course, yeah. we now have people like Stella Tal in France. Does that mean Atal can come up with a factory or, you know, set up a factory in France? Does that mean that uh, Pfizer Chihuahua that was part of you know the the delegation can 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 set up you know a festival of of, of a Bimba festival in France and run it in France without any limitation. Does that mean like Dawoodi, uh, you know Karunji and uh, the, the many likes and yourself? Can you go and start a farm in France and also you know build your product there and and run your product? Like, does that did you see that sense and that that kind of sense? In the conversation, I know some conversation on stage was quite tensed. Yes. Uh, I saw some people from the western part who were quite very tough at the moment of, and the French president remained calm, and everything was like, okay, we take this from you, and we continue to, you know, build this relationship. So that moment that was very tensed, of of, of a, some great exchange of uh, of, um, of of ideas on stage were quite very telling and. Um, it came out as a way of uh, some people feeling still hungry about the, some of the things that happened in the past. Others saying, no, 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 this is it. This is the moment. This is the new Africa, France. We are moving forward. What did you feel while sitting there as an investor? That's number one. As a creative mind in France, as a man who actually act in the theater, what opportunities did you see that the creative art can actually, you know, present itself and do in France? Interesting. The conversation is getting... <laughs> quite, quite wide now. Yes. But I'll, I'll go back to what you started with. Yes. You know, what, one thing we all know about France is, you know, France is happy, joyful, and proud to be France. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we can learn from France. Yeah. France knows all about France. France celebrates France. France celebrates its history, its cuisine, its language, its music, its culture. Mm -hmm. So when we ha want to have a conversation with France, it helps if we also come from a point yeah. of celebrating our history, yeah. our culture, our heritage, mm -hmm. our food. Mm -hmm. Then we can have it because the conversation involves yeah. exchange. Yes. So we have to have ideas, something. Yeah to bring forward. And if we don't yet understand ourselves fully, if we don't yet celebrate ourselves fully, mm -hmm. it's difficult to begin to share what we ourselves don't yet understand. It takes us back to earlier conversations we had about what is Uganda? What is being Ugandan? Yeah. That's what it comes down to, first of all. France is very sure what France is. I can be comfortable about that. Yeah. You will never find Anywhere in the world, a Bordeaux wine yeah. done the way it's done in Bordeaux. Yeah. You know that. Yes, that's true. You will never find a Camembert cheese done the way they do Camembert in Camembert in France. Have we got to a point where we can say, do we have a Bucotto pie? Mm -hmm. 
which is the only way to cook that pie in the whole world. Yeah. So when we go to Montpellier, yeah. we can get something from there and share with them that. So that's one way of, 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 of looking at it. We've, we've got to focus a bit more and really learn to celebrate ourselves. Yeah. You know, can we have our equivalent of what is celebrated at the Louvre in, in, in Paris? Yeah. Can we really celebrate that heritage to, to, to that much? That's important from that traditional creative side of things. Yeah. We can go to the other side as well. I mean, of course, you know, um, I am very confident that Ugandan businesses in any sector who are able to dream, yeah. plan, mm -hmm. and realize can fly to France and invest in any part of France as well. I mean, of course, you've, you've already mentioned a few businesses in the creative industry already who have invested in, in France. Yeah. But in other industries as well, that can happen in the knowledge industry, you know, in, 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 in many others. Yeah. What makes it even more interesting now is investment is not only physical, you know, um, it's not only in hardware. Yeah. Now you've got the internet, you've got developers yeah. in Uganda, developers elsewhere who can develop Ugandan apps that could be used in France. Um, but now it's, it shouldn't be only about we create something, we put it on a ship and we ship it out and we get paid for it. Yeah. That's when we go new, we've got to think beyond that now yeah. and go, okay, let's not say, all right, great. Let's have something for them to buy. Yeah. No, let, let it be a conversation as well from that point of view. Yeah. And let's say, is there something we can take from our learnings of how we have overcome some of our challenges in Uganda? Is there something we can take from that to invest in a part of France that may be facing similar challenges that could learn from how we solve these challenges? Yeah. I'm sure with a bit of research, we can find a few areas where we can share. Yeah. The same way France has been able to share with us so much on the technological side, in oil and gas, you know, in, in infrastructure, in water services, um, and so much more. Um, and that said, Peter, I yes. just um, want to take you deeply on that part yeah. of the conversation. So, um, was that the sense that you picked from there while you attended the new Africa-France Summit 2021, when the French president was talking, when all the presenters were on stage and talking? Did you see that as a person from Uganda, from the creative, that you think this is the creative side that we need? Did you see the sense of what you're talking about? What's exciting is yeah. I saw it, I felt it, and you know, I could see others also acting on it. Yeah. What's interesting from that point of view was those of us involved in business yeah. went a few days earlier. We were there on Monday. We had events on Monday and Tuesday uh, within um, the premises of the French government. Mm -hmm. We had another summit on, uh, on, uh, on, 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 on the Wednesday and the Thursday. So we had a lot of time to interact with business people from France. Yeah. We had the opportunity to book meetings with them in advance. Yeah. We had opportunities to share our profiles yeah. and learn more about how they do things, but also go towards a point where we can actually do business together with them. Yeah not just in France, but also in other parts of Africa yeah. where doing business with French colleagues would make a massive difference. Okay. So all our opportunity was there on the table. It just came down to saying, great, are we able to prepare in advance, go there, learn how to communicate emotionally, through word, through exchange of culture, but build from that you know, our needs to make a difference through business and otherwise. And I think there's so much of that which was there. Yeah. Not only do I think I'm pretty sure because on, but I know it takes time. In, 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 in my own interactions with businesses in France, which started much way earlier than this, I, I would say in, it's the same as my interaction with businesses in, in other countries as well. Yeah. It takes time to build something, but you've got to have patience, confidence, and a willingness to learn and continuously improve and build. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's the same thing that, that can happen there. But the difference today is this. With the ecosystem that this summit has given us, mm -hmm. when my colleagues and I went to France in 2015, we didn't have this ecosystem. We went out there and, you know, we followed, you know, yeah. the, the book, as you may, and uh, got to somewhere, you know, and say so seven years on, we've got to somewhere. But the difference now is this, the young people who went there this time around, mm. they've got the ecosystem of the new Africa-France summit around them. They've got the support structure. They were looked after really well for the entire time they were there, treated as any high-level delegation would have been treated. Beyond that, there's a lot of support from the French ecosystem in each of the countries where they are from, be it you know, through the embassies or through the Alliance Francaise, um, but even going a bit further and looking at the new initiatives which have been deployed mm -hmm. alongside this summit. If you go to the new Africa-France uh, summit web pages online, mm -hmm. you'll find initiatives that have been set up specifically for different industries. I know of two in particular for the creative industry, and you can go online and check those out. And there are incubators mm -hmm. where you can go with your idea, build it up, and get it to a point where it's robust and can last the distance. So if we all know Yves Saint Laurent, you know, French brand, could we get a Ugandan brand in fashion going on to, you know, um, one of these you know, incubators and accelerators yeah. and building up, getting to a point where they have strengthen themselves as a brand and as a business and they're able to access funding as part of that as well. So there are two different different things you'll you'll find on, 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 on the on, on the website which includes you know support, incubation, funding and further investment. And it's being led by none other than you know um, the French Development Agency, um Agent Francaise de Development, which is wow, it's the same entity that's supporting, you know, infrastructure, roads, and so on, that same entity is now supporting the creative, creative industry. industry. That means so much. Okay. I want to just um, ask you one more question, Pete, yeah. before we go for a break. Um, I mean, you're, you're obviously breaking this down. And to everyone out there, we're talking to engineer Peter Nieko, who was at the French, the new Africa French Summit 2021 on the invitation of the French uh, embassy in Uganda and the French government and of course um, they came back with a different perspective which we need to dive into to understand the different perspective that allow us to shape the attitude and perception of the local people going forward. Relationships mean two must be in communication they must be talking what is your say what is your comment about the new africa france relationships have a say you know send us a comment or kisses or disses and let us know what your thoughts are peter is breaking down what he has seen at the conference and for the next couple of days we're definitely going to be discussing the new africa france relationship how what does it mean for us in the creative industry I mean, every sector in Uganda or anywhere in the world needs a creative mind. A creative mind is a person who think about something, think about the solution to the problem, creates the product that is needed in the market for us to be able to move forward. It is a solution based. So if we're talking about the new Africa, then we've got to be able to make sure that this is actually something that we're all working together to make sure it works. Peter, coming back to you. Um, the attitude in Africa is different. I mean, if you have been in a relationship where you felt like the relationship in the past wasn't okay, um, some would say, for take for example, if you felt like the relationship in the past was very aggressive or was quite abusive to you and, or, or quite demeaning to you, and now, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the relationship is changing and it's beginning to look like, um, no, 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 we're starting from a new first page forget about that we saw that on the stage when the french president actually apologized he started this in Agadugo sometime and then again this time around he apologized and the, some of the young people took it upon themselves to say this is the only chance we have to talk to the president of a different country like france you know you don't quite get that in the, in the u.s you know in, in, the, in the uk or any other countries 
that, that are quite very eminently placed in Africa. It was something different. But then again, there's an argument that maybe because he's young, maybe because the other one don't understand as the young, maybe because the older generation don't understand the younger generation. What does that communicate to us? How, what was the feeling like in the room when it says, we are sorry for whatever has happened in the past, for whatever our ancestors have done, for whatever our background has done, for whatever our relationship has been, we are sorry. How did the people who are seated in that place, the young black Africans, look at it, particularly from the point of witness, as you, as Peter? Awesome. So what's interesting is we've, we've, we shouldn't think of history as 50 years or as 500 years. Yeah. Let's think of history as history. Mm -hmm. And if we look back only 50 years, we can see it from only one angle. Mm -hmm. If we look back 500 years, we can see from a different angle. Yeah. If we look back 5,000 years, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Remember the time when you may have been a pharaoh? Yeah. Right here where we're sitting right now, yeah. when the superpower yeah. was the country, yes. the civilization around these, these waters called the Nile. Yeah. Imagine if there was a new France Africa, Africa summit yes. then <laughs> yes, yes, yes. hosted by the Pharaoh. Yes, yes, yes. What was the relationship then? Yeah. There are cycles in history. Of course. And we can't I mean this is my opinion, but I believe we we can't focus only on one part of history. Yeah. And forget that there has been cycles for quite a while. Yeah. I went all the way back to ancient Egypt. But we can go even closer to the Roman Empire. And we can think of the Africans within the Roman Legion. Yes. Who were part of the conquest of France. And other places. We could think of the, of the Africans who were part of the conquest of most of Europe during the during the time when you know um, we had the moors yeah. and the saracens you know in spain and in italy which is kind of near france as well yeah. history is really interesting and we've got to think of it and say great ultimately you know whatever happened 50 500 or 5000 years ago yeah. let's look at it holistically and let's look at it with hope Let's look at it with honesty and let's look at it with the point of view of building a brighter future where the kids who are yet to be born are able to interact and communicate in a beautiful way. And that's what can build the kind of world we all want to see. And that's what I feel we may have had a bit of a building block of during those days yeah. and it may have been a breath of fresh air for that first step it is always a first step yeah. there's a lot of work to be done beyond this people who went have to communicate with each other people who hosted have to communicate with those who went people who went have to you know people have to figure out how can we take this spark and turn it into a flame and sustain it and build it even bigger and better going forward yeah. so a seed has been sown it has been planted and you know um, the doors have been opened now it's important for all of us to make the most of it moving forward yeah. there are still opportunities to make mistakes Mistakes are still being made as we speak. But this honesty allows us to now look at things from a different point of view and go, can we learn from mistakes done before? Can we learn from mistakes being done right now? Can we tweak what can still be tweaked? Yeah. Can we make a difference going forward? Yeah. And it all comes down to communication yeah. as a first building block. Because if I'm working with you and you're from France, let's say, or you're from a part of West Africa that only speaks French, 
I could start by learning some French. And then as we work together, I'll share some jokes with you, you'll share some jokes with me, then you'll learn, you'll teach me some Luganda. And as I learn it, we'll, we will be more than just two people who have different cultures. Yeah. We'll be two people who appreciate each other's cultures and look for the similarities between our cultures and encourage each other yeah. to be proud of our heritage and move hand in hand that way. So that's part of what we can really take a look at, especially as we move forward. Yeah. And there is so much more that will come of it as a result. But if we look at it only as a fantastic event, you know, um, fun was had, good food was eaten, uh, maybe some fundings got here and there, that's not the solid rock upon which we can build. Yeah a sustainable future of hope. Wow. We've got to go beyond that. We've got to look inwards and say, great, when I saw the Louvre, what will I do with my museum? And say, when I learned about this institute that protects the French language and makes sure it's, you know, understood and appreciated, what will I do with my own languages on this side? When I look at little things like that. When I now say, great, beyond that, what have I seen in Cote d'Ivoire yeah. that could, could benefit from the way I farm in Kirandongo? Yeah. What have I seen in Mali that can benefit from the way I drill water in Karamoja? Can I share some of those things on that side as well? So we've got to look beyond just France and Uganda or Uganda and Cote d'Ivoire but look at ourselves as human beings. Look at ourselves as people who are all little newborn babies at some point. Yeah. Identical in every way. Wow. With the same needs, same hopes, same dreams and same fears. Yeah. To simply stay alive and be happy. When we build from that newborn within each of us, we're able to build that new Africa Africa, Africa, France, yes. and Africa world yeah. relationship. Welcome back from that break. This is the Creative Industry Talk. My name is Edio Killer and this is House of Talent Television. In the studio is engineer Peter Nieko, who is the CEO of, uh, you know, Mandalis Energy and of course Repal, which is renewable energy powering livelihood agricultural, li renewable energy powering agriculture in agricultural livelihood. Uh, uh, Peter will come and tell us about that. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to know, he's also Ripal and he's also Chakula. And I just wanted to break that ice for you so you can know that from a creative point of view, Peter is actually a very serious person. Peter, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, how, do I repeat, how do I respond in France? Uh, when you say Mexico, merci beaucoup, what do I say next? Merci beaucoup is basically thank you very yeah, much. Yes, yes. So how do I respond? De rien. De rien. Yeah. Okay. Mm. De rien, Peter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a quick one. Uh, just, um, uh, you know, let's talk about Ripal. Can yes. Ripal go to France? And what is Ripal for everyone? Can Ripal set up in France with this new, uh, you know, France, new Africa France relationship? Can Ripal also move to France and invest in France? Thank you very much. Uh, Rip Ripal is a company uh, I work at, and I was blessed to be part of the team that set it up. We already have quite strong partners from France. Um, you know, we work very closely with um, a French um, uh, NGO. We work very closely with a French new energy company and um, and we are doing a lot of work right now in Uganda and we are looking to do more work in other parts of Africa. But beyond that, 
what is birthed out of our, our work focusing on renewable energy powering agriculture and rural livelihoods has been discovering a way to innovate the possibility for electricity in a village to be cheaper than electricity in the city for industrial productive use. Yeah. That's an innovation that came out of an Africa-France synergy incubated in Uganda and now able to be shared with the world, enabling us to figure out that huge issue. Uganda's president talks a lot about the importance of low cost of electricity for industry. Yeah. He talks a lot about the importance of value addition. Yeah. This birth, this innovation that's been birthed from a France-Uganda ecosystem, from a France-Africa system, has helped realize that already. Yeah. And we'll be sharing that with other parts of the world. Yeah. But the digital parts of that, and our part of our digital ecosystem, actually involves another startup which is Ugandan birthed, which is actually incubated in Toulouse, in France, and is already sharing a lot of knowledge yeah. at the forefront yeah. of the aerospace industry yeah. in Europe, including France. So there are no limits <laughs> to that conversation. Yes, yes. And whatever you're doing, just make sure you do it to the very best of your ability. Make sure you do it so that it not only makes Uganda yeah, proud, yeah, yeah. it not only makes France happy, but it makes the whole world glad and grateful. Yeah. And that's the angle that, that, that we're basically pushing. Every, every one of us has one idea that we may not think much of, but with the right ecosystem, with the right nurturing and the right building yeah. can become something. So if our dear friend, our dear sister in France in fashion, if she was going to set up a factory, she could even get the investment in Uganda to set up a factory in France. Who knows? What if she finds a way to interact with some of the big French brands out there? Some of the biggest French brands in fashion, in lifestyles, are already working with deep tech and engineering to engineer some of the stuff that they are doing. But who knows? Maybe she's got ways to even interact with some of the stuff they're doing. Maybe they can set up joint ventures together. Who knows? Maybe she can come to one of her friends in Uganda who has built an arcade and invested 10 million euros already in Uganda from their own pocket. Maybe someone like that could even invest in such a Ugandan you know, um, uh, enterprise yeah. based out of France to then go from France to other parts of Africa. France is actually a very good base to be if you're going to now go and, and take a Ugandan innovation to West Africa. Yeah. From a base in France, you can do that. If you're going to go to other parts of Africa, which may not speak French, because we found people there who speak Arabic, yeah. who speak Portuguese, yeah. who speak Afrikaans. You know, Africa is more than just French and English. It's yeah. just got so many good things there, yeah. including Kiswahili. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, I, I, speaking more from my hat as, you know, a board member at L'Ecole Diplomatique de Kampala, Kampala Primary School, I very much encourage young Ugandans, Ugandan parents, to encourage little kids growing up to just go online and figure out what are the official languages of the African Union. My prayer is learn all of them. Learn all of them, be fluent in all of them, so that you can be fully African. <laughs> I want to go yeah. to Blomfontein yeah. and speak in Afrikaans. I don't yet speak in Afrikaans, so I've got a job to do. I've got to learn Afrikaans so I can go to SA and be relaxed. I've got to improve my Portuguese so I can go to um, uh, Playa in Cabo Verde. Yeah. You know, there's a great man from Cabo Verde in Uganda who's yeah. the head of FAO here. Yeah. I want to go visit Antonio in his home yes. and, and speak to, to, to his people in his language. You know, um, I want to go, you know, to uh, Morocco and speak to them in, you know, in Maghrabi, yeah. you know. It would be great to be in an Africa where we don't need translators. Wow. Where, if you're in my village, we will shortwave. If I'm in your village, 
we'll medium wave. If we're in his village, we'll long wave. Either way, we'll communicate. Yes. And that would be so exciting. And that's the biggest thing I got out of these last two weeks. The fact that you can bring people together, yeah. they'll have one thing in common. Every one of us had a penchant for croissant. Penchant is another word in yes. English that yes. was taken from French, and yes. we now own it in English, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> I like croissant. <laughs> but but every, everyone in there yes. definitely had croissant for, yes. for breakfast. Yes. I met some people you know, from, from, from uh, Arabic-speaking Africa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't speak to them in French. I just spoke Arabic only. I met those who speak Portuguese. I don't speak Portuguese, but I tried to meet them halfway and speak to them in Spanish, yeah. and they answered back in Portuguese. We made our way somehow, you yeah. know. But you were able to communicate. Yes, yeah. but there's more we can do. Wow. Let's let's sort out that Kiswahili. Wow. Let's sort out that Arabic. Let's sort out that Portuguese. Let's sort out that Afrikaans. Yeah. Let's sort. Let's be able yeah. to go and at least have the lingua franca, another French term that we now use in English, lingua franca, um, and, um, and communicate with each other in a way that allows us to share what is deepest. And one thing that made this possible is the fact that His Excellency, you know, uh, the President of France, spoke to everyone in the room in English as well as he was speaking in French to the colleagues who were on stage, the young people. Yeah. There were translators in the room who were able to translate different languages to those who had the headphones and so on. But I'll be honest, I was most grateful for my French teachers growing up because I didn't need those headphones. And I could get the meaning behind the meaning yeah. within the meaning. That's the reason why we wanted to show today because we wanted, we wanted to start this conversation from the point of the person who understood, the person who speaks French, the person who understood, not the person who was being translated for <laughs> during yes. the New Africa France Summit. And, and, and that's the reason why we were thinking that we probably need to have Peter just do a series of interview with these guys. Everyone who has been in France coming back here, we want to hear, did they understand the magnitude of the weight placed upon their shoulder? That this is what we are saying we are going for now. As Africa, this is where we are going. And as, as, as France, this is what we want to do with you. What's our, what is our understanding of this? How does this begin to shape our perspective and attitude towards moving forward? Indeed. Sometimes we are stuck. There was a moment, Peter, on that stage when a man, uh, you know, sort of like grabbed a microphone from the president and spoke and watching the video. And I said, um, and he felt like um, he was going native, sort of, and everything remained calm. I mean, you were processing this not from the English translation to France or France, <laughs> French translation to English, but directly from there. <laughs> what, what, what? was your assessment of that of course mm. we know yes that he was trying to test the waters to see am i free or i am not free but also sometimes you know to outgrow the things that have we've been through in life mm. sometimes it's difficult um sometimes we struggle to be in the future but why trying to be who we are yesterday you know it's it's very difficult to try to be who you want to be tomorrow but at the same time in who you were yesterday it's, it's a very confusing statement right there but but we understood something there was a calmness of that situation at that moment yes. what was your assessment and what did it mean that assessment really meant to every single black person who was sitting there including those who are actually the french black people working inside france and their ministers what 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 signal did it send I've got to give a lot of kudos to uh, the French education system, especially in how they train and prepare the diplomats and civil servants for service. I felt so much that everyone in the public sector within France um, who we interacted with had that decorum, had that calm, had that peace, had that ability. Even those who were in, uh, even those who, 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 were, who were officers of the law, yeah. making sure His Excellency was safe, even they had a level of diplomacy mm -hmm. 
which was <laughs> to write to your grandmother yes, about. Yes, yes. <laughs> there was no spanking off the stage. No. <laughs> and yeah. and that's something that we can all learn. That's that's what I think yeah. we can learn from that. Yeah. It's something that we in Africa as young people can learn from. Yeah. It's something that we can teach kids as they're growing up and say, should we make sure kids learn more about the importance of diplomacy, decorum, and calmness, yeah. um, while not forgetting the importance of making our point heard. Yeah. But also the importance of listening to someone else's point, yeah. allowing them to speak, allowing them to let it all out, yeah. to be calm, and then share also what we have to share, but let it be an exchange of ideas, yeah. an exchange of experiences yeah. and an opportunity to then let bygones be bygones yeah. without forgetting them. Yeah. And that's really interesting from that point of view. But it's something that not only us can learn from, it's something that also the French private sector yeah. can learn from. Yeah. I, my, my prayer is that the French private sector also gets to learn that level of diplomacy and understanding and conversation that the French public sector is incredible at. We, the private sector in Africa, can learn from that. The private sector in France, that's French, can learn from that. The French private sector in Africa can definitely learn from that too. That was something else which we all need to go, take some three hours, you know, um, have some croissants, have a glass of uh, Chateauneuf du Pape, yeah. have some. Uh, you know, raclettes if you're up in the hills and it's cold <laughs> <laughs> and watch the whole three and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a learning experience for each of us, whichever way we're looking at it, whether yeah. we're a young person, a multinational or a local Ugandan company. Yeah, yeah. Definitely very, very crucial to look at it from all those points of view. Wow. Peter, we're coming to the evening of our interview today, yes. and I would just want to first of all say thank you very much, everybody who has been, you know, you know, watching the program and sharing it fan wide. We also do know that sometimes is difficult because of the internet in Africa and particularly in Uganda, you know, to the rest of the world. But sometimes, but we will continue to have the broadcast going on, and if you missed part of it, it will definitely be running over and over for you to be able to catch and not miss any part or even reconnect with the part that you've missed and and peter for me is uh having this conversation with you gives a lot more enlightenment to what happened and the insights of what happened on the stage yeah. in france in montefila that day or in those days that you guys were there and um you had a number of people who came with you did you have a chance to actually sit down as a you know uh, a delegation from Uganda to say what what can we learn from here what can we do from here did you sort of like organize yourself to try and uh, have a Ugandan caucus there to try and engage some of these ministers or businesses to do this from a private sector point of view as people invite in France or it was business as usual we we do the conference we all depart to our rooms and then uh, see you home what was very interesting there was um, you had groups that came on different days yes. um, and within those you had you know a lot of support structures within us. Mm -hmm. We're really grateful to the Embassy of France in Uganda because they actually made sure we were okay yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Um, even as we were making you know connections yeah. to other parts of Africa and to France, yeah. I think our connections within Uganda have been strengthened okay. thanks to this. We all came from different parts of Uganda, yeah. from different walks of life, yeah. from different industries, yeah. but I can, and different age groups as well. Yes, yes. But, I, but I, I felt this interesting gel forming, you yeah. know, yeah. from when we were trying to find, oh, where, where can I find, you know, toothpaste, yeah. um, you know, or oh, where, where can I find this, the other. But in this journey, yeah. our bonds have become even stronger. And there's so much that we've all learned from, you know, what in what to me and to others, I hope, was the piece de resistance of His Excellency uh, President Macron's speech. Uh, another French term, which means the main course. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it came down yeah. to what he said in French, and um, I'll try to translate it to, to English, but yes, 
What is you can say it in French. I'll, I'll, I'll say it in English. I'll say it in English. I'll say it in English because they can hear. Get it in French on 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 the when they say, get the whole speech. But yeah. challenge is watch the speech, learn French, so that in three years' time you can listen to the whole speech in French. That, that, that that's my challenge, people. <laughs> uh, especially everyone who went on delegation. Anyone who who works for a French company. Yeah. Uh, just learn French, please, please. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. the meat of the matter was as follows, you know, or vegan meat if you don't eat meat, um, was France cannot look at its own future and, and really make it happen if it doesn't consider the Africa within it as well as the Africa without. That's the kind of message. Repeat that again, Pete. You know, for, for France to really look at its own future, yes. it has to consider the Africa within and the Africa without. And it's got to consider the history. Be they joyous histories or be they histories that could have been more joyous. That's my interpretation of what I heard as the meat of the matter which was, we have all had a past. Let's be honest about that past. Let's each of us admit that past. But let's also acknowledge that and move forward. But remember that within us, there is a part of each other. What was big there to me was, there is a part of Africa in France. And I don't mean an African as in terms of someone who looks African, but yes. the Africanity. He used the word Africanity. There is an Africanity in France, yes. and there is an Africanity in Africa. The same way, let's 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 find that 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 common core within all of us, and build from there. And that's what I thought was amazing because we all know that you know civilization became in Africa. You know, life started from here. So when you talk about the Africanity within, you're talking about the core, the building blocks, the beginning. You're talking about, in my opinion, the baby we are each born as. Yeah. And when we go back to that core, we will find the similarities within ourselves to build that brighter future and that more glorious tomorrow. And um, to paraphrase his actually his words again, you know, to make the planet better again wow well peter thank you very much first of all for this wonderful you know deliberation and the show this morning uh, and of course this afternoon or this evening depending on which part of the world you're actually watching the program from i want to just take a few moments to just read before you close the show uh peter i want to start from a, a gentleman here all the way in france uh, Eddie Okila, thank you very much for the show. Maxi Boku <coughs> uh, is uh, written many other things in France, but he says, <laughs> I love that gentleman speaking French. Uh, it was nice to see some Ugandans actually attend this and, and put on that. I've been looking forward, uh, you know, to see how this will come to pass. I live and work in France, and it was a great joy for me to see that the Africans were in France and were beginning to talk about certain things that were never usually talked about. My joy and hope is that um, the Africans will take this seriously and it's not just a political speech or a political stage or a platform, but we are actually able to leave this going forward and capitalize on this going forward. I think that it is important that a prison of our time begins to, th to, to lead a way, a new way of the world going forward. Macron, Kudos. Kudos indeed. Yes. I uh, have another gentleman here. Says, Eddie Gula, thank you very much. I followed the conference from there. I just felt like the delegation from Uganda didn't take much advantage of that. Uh, I did not see them engaging business communities there during the conference to actually actualize that to serious business. So I like the topic you've brought. What does it mean for the creative industry? I think it's not just a creative industry. It should be for production industry and put all of this. We have many countries, companies from France working in Uganda. And can we have also this Ugandans build some multinational companies working in France? <laughs> uh, that, that way uh, we'll begin to see the new Africa-France relationship as a reality. 
Wow. So people are actually taking this very serious. Yes. Peter, I want to read one from, uh, you know, a, a comment here from uh, Kito Diallo says, Thanks, Pete, for a great show. Uh, I have a question. France is known for exercising uh, assimilation policy of colonialism, which seemingly was the best at benefiting Africans where it saw many West Africans heading to France. Is this new French French Africa relationship another form of modern day assimilation policy? What I'd like to answer to my dear brother and say thank you so much, merci okay. beaucoup, mon frère, uh, is ultimately when we look at something new, yeah. we look at what was old, we learn from it, yeah. and we build something better. Yeah for the planet and for the future. Yeah. So whatever challenges were there in the way things have been done before, yeah. or the way things may still be being done today in other yeah. areas, yeah. Yeah. there is what we should learn from that. And um, he may have highlighted a few things as well, mm. and I believe we shall learn from that. But what's interesting is, it's no longer a one-way street. I think we can all go online and Google and try to figure out how much French investment is there in Uganda? I speak for Uganda because I, I, I live here. I believe one will find that it is significant. One might find that it is so significant that it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And one might also realize that there are enough Ugandan investments in Uganda that are sizable enough, and we had a few of them on our delegation. Massive entities that would hold their weight in terms of revenues anywhere in the world, be it in France or even in California. The point is, if a company from France can come to Uganda and help us overcome a few hiccups that we have in certain sectors yeah. where they have better experience, we also should consider you know, looking for opportunities to invest in places like France and, and other areas where we can build on our knowledge on this side to make a difference there. But more than that, take advantage of what he highlighted. Say, look, you know, I'll go biblical maybe and go, you know, kind of out, of, out of the lion's carcass, you know, honey was found. Yeah. So if the history in West Africa could have been better, we can make it better now. Yeah. We could say, could a Ugandan company work through France, Africa? Could it work the other, the, the other way around? There are so many possibilities. Could a West African country, companies from West African country, go somewhere else and figure out how to better connect with a place like Uganda or Kenya or, or Tanzania? Yeah. There's a lot we can learn from each other. There's a lot we must learn from each other. And there's a lot we need to learn from each other to actually move forward yeah. and not just look at the past as sadness. But look at the past, not as something to be forgotten, not as something to only apologize for to make people feel better, but as building blocks for the future. Yeah. And no matter how bad what happened may have been, there is always a way to turn something around yeah. to make the most of that. Because if I'm to be very honest, I'll go, well, you know, I talked earlier about you know, going way back beyond 50 years and talking about, you know, yeah you know, the Roman Empire and other things and so on. But even I look at just the last, you know, 50 to 100 years, I can now go to Cote d'Ivoire and do business because I speak French yeah. and because they speak French, right? Yeah. Um, someone from Cote d'Ivoire can come to Uganda and do business yeah. if they speak English because we speak English. Yeah. That's something worth thinking about. It's not all bad. Of course, there may be a lot that n could be made better, yeah. but that's what we have to start from. We say, look, it's not perfect, it's not incredible, but it doesn't mean it can't become incredible. Yeah. It doesn't mean it can't become better. It doesn't mean we can't turn a new page and build a new future and write a new novel, as the head of state said, write a new novel and, and, and make it even more joyous. Wow. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah. I just want to read one more, you know, comment from here as we close the show. And this is really a very interesting one. 
it's, it's sort of like a comment. It says, Eddie Okila, thank you very much. I hope that we can continue with this conversation for the next couple of days. What I'm really very much particularly interested in, I'm in the art uh, uh, industry, and you're talking about the, what does it mean for the creative industry in Uganda. Creative industry in Uganda already doesn't have very good policies to able to, to be able to help it foster to go beyond borders. And, and that's something that we need to look into. But it doesn't mean that everything is doom and gloom. What we're really interested in mostly is to see that this thing that France is actually talking about is a new reality of how people begin to view Africa going forward. What I'm interested in going forward is to see how this conversation you've started on this platform with these people will end. But more especially, I want to see that this is not lip service, it's a reality that can be lived and can be practiced and can be tried and tested. This is the only time France has got to prove itself right from many other countries that have always talked about their heart being for Africa, but they do something different. We've had China talk about uh, Russia and China saying that trade with Africa, trade with Africa, but the trading has not been <laughs> balanced. Uh, the Chinese trading in Africa is almost one-way street, is not the two-way street. Can France leave its promise that a new Africa can be born? Great, uh, you know, words from Mr. Peter Nyeko and a shout-out to him. And I have a question to Mr. Peter Nyeko. He speaks French very well, seemingly. Can he tell us whether he was able to get a sense of truth from the French people? Because sometimes they can be deceptive. <laughs> Peter, I think you are now becoming like the Messiah on, on the French things. I mean, you've had the question coming from my friend Peter right there. Peter is, um, is, is into creative arts industry, particularly is a painter. Awesome. Yes, he paints. He's a paint artist. And uh, he said he's... He sold, I know he has sold many of his, um, you know, art and craft to the French people. I, I mean, back in the days when I was um, uh, still very active, I used to be the best MC for the creative arts in Uganda. At some point, we tried to lead, uh, you know, a campaign to raise money to build uh, the National Museum for the Creative Industry in Uganda. And then that was led by Roberta from, from Germany and, of course, Carol uh, Bodner from, 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 uh, from Germany as well. And I think there was um, another gentleman from France whose name I forgot. But that was the discussion. So this relationship has been going on for some time. So Peter has, of course, benefited from some of this. But then again, everybody is saying, is this something that is going to be a reality? Perhaps we'll bring, you know, people from the French embassy, the director, and maybe even at some point just, you know, put the French ambassador onto the bench here to basically have this conversation. Is it true? Is it going to be a reality? I wouldn't mind actually, you know, having a conversation with the president himself to say, this is what we want to understand this from the Ugandan perspective. Does this mean it's going to be a reality? But over to you, Peter, as we wind up. And awesome. then when you give us that, Peter, we also want to give us the last three things that summarizes what you have said today that of what this summit actually really means for the creative industry. Please awesome. dive into it. So great. Um, I, I believe it's, it's, it's real. You, know? um, you can always look at something based not only about what it's spoken, but what has been done. We all know it is a fact that France has really supported the Ugandan creative industry, you know, going way, way back. Yeah. Sadly for me as a Ugandan, much more than us as Ugandan business people have, yeah. even though we have the ability to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, we're learning from France how to appreciate our own. Yeah. We're learning from France how to appreciate Ugandan art and, and, so, and so all rest of that. So it's already been happening. The fact that a new page is being turned to make it even more interesting and involve us even more in that conversation allows for reflection and, allow, and gives a lot of hope. It's, you know, I speak the way I speak for many reasons, probably because I'm thinking in Luo and speaking in English, yes. but <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. um, when I translate it to France, you know, and, 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 and what, I, what, what I was hearing, you know, uh, when I was there, 
it's a fact that there is a way forward. The work really right now, at least coming on from the summit, is for each of us, you know, 300 plus who went from around Africa, strangely enough, a huge percentage of that from Uganda. That's another point to think about. If there are 300 and a 20 from Uganda, Uganda must probably have some form of interest. Significance, yeah. Yes, interest and, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 and, and I mean, I do understand. That's a conversation for another yes. show altogether, you know. And, and, uh, you know, and, um, and, and that's why it's, re it, what does that mean? It means, in my opinion, each of those 22 had something to share with France and something to share with the other African delegates there, which is special about them and special about Uganda that the world needs. Yeah. Each of those 22 who went needs to ask himself, why me? Why Uganda? What is it that I had to share out there? And what is it that I can still share? to make the world a better place and give honor to Uganda. It's, we shouldn't think about it in terms of saying, you know, what do we get from France or what will France give us? No, it's, I believe it's the other way around. I believe it was what France could give us. Yeah. France would just fly in, right? But if you go there and have that conversation, there is something you have to say. There's something which you have to share. There's something which you can do. In some industries, more than one person was on the delegation. And I'd say, reflect upon that. What does that mean for the opportunities for your businesses in France, in French-speaking West Africa? There is so much to build on from this. And we, from the business sector, have so much to learn from our colleagues in the arts yeah. because they've gone far, right? Yeah. They've been able to take African art and make it global. Now, can we take African business and make it global the way African art has gone global? Can we take African education global the way they have taken African music global? Can we take African innovation global the way they have taken African sport global? You see what I mean yes. right there? Yeah. That's what that conversation was happening in there. And it was as honest and as raw as it could possibly be. And, and I still applaud um, you know, our hosts for being gracious and allowing each of us to express what was not just at the tip of our tongue, but deep within our souls. Grâce à France. Merci beaucoup et merci à tous. My name is Ronnie Abasa and I'm here in the fix to fix four things about Uganda. Number one, talk like a Ugandan. This is Uganda. What does that really mean? If I'm in the parking lot and you are paid as a security guard to watch over my car, then I'm not going to have to pay you an extra to do your job. Do your job, let me do mine. Number one. Number two, why do Ugandans use the word million in plural? The digit before million is what makes it plural. So you don't say two million. Two millions, three millions, four millions. It's million, okay? Million. Three. You have a nice fancy car. Mpenkoni, Mercedes Benz, whatever it is. And you are busy littering. Opening your window and throwing garbage. Sugar cane pills, maize cobs. Who sent you? Who bewitched you? Who, who, who? Where do you come from? All right? And last but not least, these Ugandan proverbs. I hear, I'm expecting some money, I will pay you next week. If you, let, the Bible says, let your yay be a yay and your nay be a nay. Full stop. These stories of, I'm expecting some money, I'm expecting a call which didn't come through, that needs to change. My name is Ronnie Abasa, and I just fixed you.
Columbia Records. Nessence, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know me now, yeah, you know, Alex, torch, hey. Kampala, Apex, Uganda Don't know about the music, the simple production Two Jala, get tipsy off a NSC Missy Pepsi, a lot of them I see The movie 
and no apology. Many artists get an allergy. The wagulu a lot of them me a pre-torture for the music in a oven. We go on so high, so a lot of them a see. We are so high. Badi momo toka fe tuli kubigere. Tuli inze sente za fe ziwele. Mambo minji a lot of kelele. And a bad mind still fight it every day. Mawe, them a light that fire mawe. Them a light that fire mawe. Fire a fi bone, fire a fi bone and so no Mande to sandulu na kulwange Sula wonanze wen sanze Aba chalavange bona mubampe Nye nye za mwain kwame Mi tell them that he bad mind No time for you No response if me think it no wreck for you Don't need it a bono si bud debo Ame time for you mash up the place you know Bali mu moto kafe tuli kubigere Tuli inze sente za fe ziwele Mambo minji ala takelele And a bad mind still fight it every day Mawe, them a light that fire mawe Them a light that fire mawe Fire a fi bone, fire a fi bone and so Magamba, nzenja kanga ma like Aka pira anka zanya me strike Tuvayo movie de light flight Lewa to lawa, de sewe out of the sight Batu wala na beka we art and style Zena de movie before the boy, de a I know DJ me know your bad, de a I know Girl de ma fi wine pan time Bali mu moto ka fe tuli kubigere Tuli inze sente za fe ziwele Mambo minji ya la takelele And a bad mind still fight it every day Mawe Them a light that fire mawe Them a light that fire mawe Fire a fi bone Fire a fi bone and so no Studio with Tony now we no tequila Everybody fall in when they see the killer Everybody fall in Philly we go all me gala Love me when me perform me Now me pull up the bad man style ya hear me Too much money to me think you can help me Now me self and the water like fairy Some say me cool but me say I'd vary Badi mu moto ka fe tuli kubigere Tuli inze sente za fe ziwele Mambo minji ya la takelele And a bad man still fight it every day Mawe, them a light that fire mawe Them a light that fire mawe Fire a fi bone, fire a fi bone and so no Stay pan top like a pulpit Flow got brain inside it So busy but them can hide it No man to me think can hide it From a far with my killer binocular Me speak vernacular And kwa gala you a killer Me know say so many men I want you a kubo kida She tell me she could love me But she got HIV HIV How could I see that When she got no ID No ID 
Maria, Maria, Mariana Ma Mariana, ono muwala te wa mukwana
farmers around us here have no access to electricity, no access to clean cooking fuel, and no access to milling. So to mill their rice and groundnuts and maize, they have to drive miles away to Guna. They have to pay for transport, they have to pay for storage and accommodation. Mandulis is an electricity company that uniquely also provides agricultural value addition. Farmers bring us their crops and we turn this into higher value products. This alone doubles their income. We're trying to create a way of generating electricity that delivers value to the local communities in which we operate. Now, we've come here so that we use the waste from all the farming around us to produce electricity through biomass gasification at each of these sites. At the same time, that focus on biomass means we can not only generate electricity, but we end up with a byproduct, that biochar, which can be used um, to produce cooking fuel. Doing that means that we save nearly one million trees per annum. Technology is a thread that ties everything together. We combine the blockchain technology, AI, and Internet of Things to make sure that we can address critical bottlenecks that allows us to engage thousands of farmers. And the cost of settlement of electricity transactions go down significantly. In a sense, energy is the center of entrepreneurship in the regions and by providing these underserved areas with access to electricity we're hoping that it won't just turn on a light it'll turn on a movement towards improving people's lives in those regions They always say that uh, the greatest uh, asset you have in every organization is a uh, human being. So leadership starts with you and how you interact with the people around you, you know, even in your home. The truth is, if you're not able to lead your home very well, you can't lead anything else. Wow. So leadership starts with you. And if you set that example, others will follow you. I want to know, what is it, what is it like to be the president and the CEO of Baywood Continental, Baywood Group, and all these things going on. How do you manage? You got to stay focused, and got to, you have to have your eye on the ball. Yeah. Eye on the ball, yeah. always. So what's that ball to succeed? Make it success, not minding the challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, Emperor Chris Baywood Ibe. Why the youth? They're the future. I don't care, but at the future, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. But you know what? That step does not guarantee you are going to reach that, to that destination. Yeah. Continuous walking will assure you get to that stage. So one of the things that I pride myself for is that you don't need to have billions to be a philanthropist. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I did it, and I found the secret to success. It's giving. I have the pleasure to present to you... KCCA has taken a number of steps to address this sanitation challenge, which include, but not limited to the following, the setup.
wise man once say the future has a name and its name is hope a tiny flicker of light that feeds on hope is enough to shatter any shield of darkness at mandulus we really believe in So as we, as we come to the, end of, uh, to the end of the show, what word do you have for barristers out there? Because like we said earlier, you won't be a barrister at 70, okay? What can these barristers do to make themselves more relevant in the coffee chain and the coffee process and also more relevant for their lives going ahead? I usually meet barristers and I'll tell them you're going to be active for 10 years maximum, yes. you know? You stretch it 20 years mm. but you can you know graduate yourself first you've learned barrister basic barrister you know you know add more skills but also advance to maybe quality control because yeah. if you do R or Q grading then you can get a job in 
in a, a, a private farm yeah. or a coffee exporting or a coffee processing farm. Yeah. That's one plus. Another thing, if you're a barista who has a background in agriculture, you can work backwards, you know, f switching back to your profession. Yeah. It's going to be good if you applied for a job, let's say quality control, and you're a barrister, you have studied R or Q, mm. and you also know some coffee agronomy. Yeah. Definitely, they will take you. Yeah. Also, you're going to be better than someone who, is, who has studied quality control, but is not a barrister, because, you know, every... Every employee wants a bigger package yeah. of you at the same price. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the thing is, if you're a barista, you're 40 years, you've overstretched maybe 40, 45. Yeah. This land Q or R, UCD has free, you know, these are free courses. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking for UCD, but they are free. R and Q grading, they are free. You, you stand a chance to get a job in the coffee industry, yeah. in growing or processing farm. But another thing, we, we have some, some people we are with who have a background in agriculture or biotechnology. It is time for the coffee break. A very good morning wherever you're watching us from. How are you doing? Has been your week? Monday to Friday is always a stressing time. You know, like you wake up on a Monday and you're like, oh God, I have a whole week waiting for me. But on a Saturday like this and uh, a morning like this at uh, an hour of 11 a.m., we always got you covered. We give you a break and talk about coffee. Get to know things that you might have done during the week and your uh, weekend is covered. So my name is Amoni Mukisa and welcome to the Coffee Break uh, Show. This is House of Talent Television and we're streaming live on our YouTube channel that's at House of Talent Uganda but on, also catch the show on Facebook as House of Talent uh, Television Uganda. But on Twitter, you know, you can go over there and follow our Twitter handle that's at HTV1 Uganda. We shall be streaming live every show from our studios right here in Ibukoto. And uh, yeah, we get to talk about coffee. We have a variety of shows, but today it's time for coffee. Welcome once again on the show. Today I have a guest. Uh, we're going to be talking about various things. We're going to be talking about a little bit of like, you know, how the coffee houses are going to open up. The economy is fully opening up literally like next week. Uh, it's going to fully open up and now we want to look at it in that aspect of like uh, how are the coffee houses ready and how are they going to cope up with the uh, extended hours of working but also on the side of the baristas are they ready uh, to tackle or take on this mantle of working for more extensive hours because most of the baristas you never know during this time of work how uh, they got more things to do um, because they used to work less hours but that's the conversation we shall be having today with my guest today but before we get into all that welcome my guest today on the show thank you so much welcome man Thank Who you, are we having here today? Yeah, I'm called uh, Apaga Samuel, mm. and uh, I'm Ugandan by nationality, a barista by profession, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I like the confidence, man. <laughs> That's 2022, eh? That's the way to go, eh? Yeah. Uh, it's Samuel. Yes. Sir. Samuel, how have you been? I've been good. How are you finding the new year? The new year hasn't been that bad, mm. uh, just because I resigned from my former workplace to move on with something new as I prepare for something better. You know, always when people resign eh, mm. from their former workplaces, they always have something big coming. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, have yeah, something yeah. big that's coming? Yeah, there's something big I'm expecting. You know, whenever Barry says resign, may I always think about like, you know, pushing out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not something big you're talking about, eh? <laughs> So, yeah. uh, so let's talk about coffee because this is the coffee break. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you get into the coffee industry and how did you get to know about coffee? Uh, actually, uh, I got to know about coffee through a brother. Mm -hmm. I was in uh, Form 6, then I was actually, we're getting to a vacation. Then uh, a brother talked to me, was like, Sam, you're soon having a vacation and it's a bit long. It, uh, you know, eight months when you're home. Yeah. Then he was like, maybe you can come, I connect you to someone. You you, you get to know about coffee mm -hmm. because, you know, 
you, you take it as a profession, then uh, there's some good money, you'll earn some good money. So uh, the vacation, you were talking about like the senior four vacation, no, senior six vacation. Senior six vacation. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I got home, uh, my parents contributed some money. Then I joined the uh, barista school. Uh, Madam Nyakaisike mm. was uh, the we teacher. Nyakaisike and uh, Nyapende Sarifai. Which school was that? Barista House. Barista House. Yeah. I like the names, Barista mm. House. Like, yeah. literally, it's only for baristas, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, when I joined, uh, I studied for one and a half month. Mm. Then, from there, she got me a job at Zikofi Cafe, Chiwatule. Then, I started working as a head barista. Wow. Yeah. One and a half months, one you've and studied, and now you're working as a head barista yeah. in a certain place. Yeah. Ah, man, that was quite something because people do work for mm. quite a while mm. before they become head barristers. You yeah, know, for yeah, someone to right. trust you with their shop, someone to trust you with yeah, their right. coffee and everything to lead it. Mm. It seems like you're 